Okay, let's get started uh, taking a look at uh, Form Center. We're actually uh, on the GovAssist uh, demo portal. Let's go ahead and log in. I've already pre-registered uh, with this portal, so uh, just in the interest of time, I'll go ahead and log in. The first uh, screen that we're brought to enables, summarizes the basic services that we make available uh, through the self-service portal. And once again, I, I'd just like to make sure that uh, everyone understands that uh, this is something that's designed to be integrated with either an existing web application or perhaps an existing enterprise portal. We're demonstrating it here in a standalone mode, but uh, the intention is always that this would be integrated with an organization's uh, website uh, somehow. So the first task that we need to do here is come along and actually search for and find forms. Forms can be owned by multiple multiple departments or organizations. One can uh, filter those forms and uh, narrow down the, the selection via a variety of uh, different mechanisms. Once we've uh, located the form, uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll click on a link to the form itself and uh, it brings us to what we call a landing page. And the purpose of this landing page is to really provide information uh, about the form or the service that's about to be completed. Another, and many organizations may use a search engine or have static links embedded in a website. And in fact, when uh, one clicks on one of those links, you're brought to this page. The page um, provides a number of a number of services or capabilities behind it. Aside from just letting you go to the form itself, it also provides a mechanism to uh, either self-register or log in, and you can make it mandatory that a user be registered in order to complete a form, or alternatively, you know, you can have anonymous completion of the forms where the users don't need to be logged in. There's also a lot of metadata behind this page as well that can be discovered by a search engine. The page is co-branded with the name of the organization or partner that might actually, uh, if there's a, a need for co-branding. So next, let's uh, click on the, the form itself and uh, open the form up. And uh, this particular form's a, a PDF uh, form built with uh, Lifecycle Designer and uh, is very typical of the kinds of forms that uh, one interacts with. I won't go into a great de deal of detail on the form itself. I'll choose, um, choose a couple of the basic options. And as I do that, like most smart forms, it's uh, filling out additional uh, information, making that available uh, online. Once again, I'm not going to fill in any details in the interest of time here. I'm just going to scroll through things. This form does have one uh, fairly nice component. It's actually a form where somebody can apply for uh, a compensation claim. And in this particular case, um, we have a graphical injury selector that's part of the form or built into the form itself. One can click on a, on a body part and uh, identify a, uh, a particular type of injury, and in selecting the injury, the, uh, the, there's a summary built at the bottom of the form, etc. So um, we can uh, go through and click, that, click on that. Let's go ahead though and submit the form. So I'll click on the I agree to the above conditions, click uh, submit the form. And uh, in, as part of a submissions process, it's identified that um, before we can complete the submission, I need to actually have uh, upload my medical history as well. So I'll come along and uh, and uh, uh, browse for that file. Now, in doing that, it's telling me that it's got to be a certain file type. It's got a maximum size. If I click on uh, OK there, I'll choose the medical history record and just attach that. And uh, once that's completed, uh, my submission goes through. From a user, uh, user interface perspective, it's bringing us to a confirmation or thank you page. This is a standard page that's normally displayed after the, com after the submission's been completed by the applicant. Um, it displays a receipt number and gives the applicant the opportunity to, uh, to view a read-only copy of the form itself. So let's uh, uh, bring that in. That's displayed in Reader. And this is a 
a static document. It's non-editable. It's got a receipt section that's been enabled at the top of the form, and uh, I can save this. It's actually generated as what we call a PDF-A format, which is suitable for archiving, and uh, the user or the applicant can save this uh, for their own records. Um, of course, it's also possible to go back to the user portal and see a history of all of my previous submissions um, and even view um, a to-do list of uh, items that may be forms that I may have uh, partially saved uh, previously and I can come back and open at a later point in time. Some of the other things in the uh, user portal is the ability to manage user profiles. Those profiles can include a whole lot of information that can be used to pre-populate forms um, as well. So let's now jump across and look at uh, the other side of Form Center, which is the uh, administration console. This is how the information actually gets created and, and managed in the first place. So I'll log into the administration console as an administrator. And uh, the administration console caters for multiple roles, uh, people playing different uh, roles within the organization. And they include things like a form developer, a form tester, uh, a form manager. Um, and uh, an overall operations staff, help desk operators, etc. Those roles can also be confined to a specific sub-organization. So if you have a department that wants to be able to manage all of their own forms, roles can be defined that constrains them to only viewing and dealing with information specific to uh, that particular department or organization. Same thing would apply with business partners, uh, which can be very handy in a number of different uh, scenarios. In fact, Form Center uh, utilizes what we call a multi-tenanted architecture, which means that it actually operates very well in a cloud-based environment as well. So from an operations perspective, um, let's start off just having a look at a couple of things. So the first thing we can see here is that uh, if we have a look at the submission history, we can see all the forms that have been submitted within a given time range. And in fact, uh, this is fairly important because there's a lot of detailed information kept about each about each form. Everything from the, the details of the submission through to any attachments that may have been uploaded, um, payments, if payments are occurring through to audit details, uh, etc. And so this is very handy for help desk staff and also for reporting purposes and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. In addition to the submission data, every time we render or display a form, we also keep a record about that and uh, that's very important from a performance perspective because we can really start to see and track down, particularly as volume increases, detailed performance metrics um, through that uh, request log. And that can be very, very important. Um, let's come back, and uh, there are a number of reports that this enables us to do every to produce. This one is one that we call a submission uh, trend report. And uh, if I do that through to the end of uh, June, um, we'll see some uh, more information uh, spring spring out of that um, earlier in the year. You can see um, both the blue area represents all the form requests and the orange represents the submissions. So this is telling us about the abandonment data as well or percentage of forms that are rendered versus those that are submitted. And in fact, we can even drill into looking at the different versions of reader uh, that are actually uh, being used for uh, PDF-based forms. Um, there are a number of other um, reports and uh, detailed pieces of information that are very important to the operations team in actually managing uh, and the publication process and uh, tracking the day-to-day -day operations of the system. Um, from a form developer's perspective, if I wear my form developer's hat, of course, one of the most important things I need to be able to do is upload my forms into a test environment uh, where the forms can be tested and uh, 
um, tried out prior to being put into uh, production. So um, what I'll do is uh, just choose my department. Normally I'd be restricted to a specific uh, department. Sample uh, form, uh, give it a name, form code. So this is a unique code that's specific to each form and the type of form. So um, I'm just going to work with a dynamic PDF form, but we support all sorts of form guides and even uh, HTML forms as part of the solution. Next, we need to choose the actual template, the typically created by uh, Lifecycle, Adobe Lifecycle designer. So I'll choose uh, the, the form document itself and uh, I'll also choose the uh, what we call the schema seed file, which is used if we need to map pre-population data into the form itself. I'll select the portal that this is associated with, um, so it's the GovAssist portal, and uh, I'll also choose some. And in fact, on that portal. Um, Uh, I'll put a description in there that will appear in the um, in the description on the landing page itself. I can choose to read or extend the form and choose some of the standard options. And there's much more detailed options that can be configured uh, configured later on as well. So when I go ahead and create that, that will upload the form into the Form Center repository. And we can go ahead and do a test render of the form in the landing page or um, or uh, even edit any of the uh, details itself. And in fact, if I choose to edit my form, um, you can see that there's a lot more information actually available to us about the form itself. Everything from whether we're going to use signatures, whether to use those uh, confirmation and landing pages, um, is the form in test mode. So that's quite uh, important because often you might want to test your form out even on a production server, but you don't necessarily Necessarily want it published to public users just yet. The description, so um, we can really fill in a, a fairly detailed uh, uh, description uh, through here. Control the generation of the receipt number that's used in the form itself, and the receipt number uses some patterns, um, but we can also call into back end systems to utilize the receipt as well. Um, we can store multiple versions of a form and uh, control when new versions are actually uh, published. Um, an important aspect for most organizations is having a control process around testing and releasing a new form as well. Just like a web content management system, you know, while you, you need to be able to control how these new forms and, uh, are put put into production. And so initially a form starts off in development and then uh, after it's been done some development, unit testing, uh, you can mark it as ready for test where testers will be notified and they'll either mark it as passed or failed and put it into ready uh, for production. When somebody with production um, authorities or rights would come along and export the form from the pre-production server and uh, move it across to the the uh, production uh, production machine. So, uh, fairly important uh, capability uh, in uh, in most uh, in most scenarios. So this is also where we define the attachments that are associated with a form. So specifying attachments as simple as clicking on the attachments tab, specifying the uh, name. Look, that's a good overview of uh, Form Center. There are more specific uh, demonstrations available through our features page where you can look and drill into uh, more details about specific capabilities of uh, Form Center. Thanks for watching this presentation.